so you can do a couple of things when it comes to your brows. You can use a pomade, you can use a brow gel. I don't have a brow gel. Pomades are creams. So pomades pretty much give you the most consistency of coverage when it comes to brows. If you want to snatch brow, you're gonna use a pomade. If you want to use a if you want a heavier brow, you're gonna use a pomade. However, you can use a pomade with a smaller brush to get more of a softer finish. Let me show you guys how to do that on the end of the brow. You can use my favorite, which is a pencil. These are Sephora Collection pencils. Um, I love their pencils. To me, they're just as good as Anastasia. The colors are great. They come in more, sh they come in the same amount of shades. But they're $12 instead of $24. So you're cutting that price in half. Quality. Again, remember I said Dior is comparable to uh, Sephora Collection. So you can pretty much buy a Dior. It's a cheaper package. You can also use a brow powder. This is the Brett Brow Powder. He's a celebrity makeup artist. His name is Brett Freeman. I love his because the colors are realistic to what you actually can see in people's hair. For me, me personally, the Anastasia's uh, brow colors are not this realistic. Like, you, these are literally the hair colors that you can see in people's hair. Um, and then I've taken very, taken very heavily to this. This is brow freeze. Um, I used to use the brow gel. The Anastasia brow gel is my favorite. It's like super glue to the brow. Once it dries, the hairs aren't moving. Same thing with this. This freezes the brow where it's at. So I always start my application off with a pencil or a pomade. Let's talk a little bit about brushes. When you are filling in brows, the smaller the brush, the better. Why? Because the smaller the brush, the more detail you're gonna get. Think about it, you're trying to duplicate hairs. So if you're trying to duplicate hairs, you wanna use something small. Get your brow brushes and liner brushes from an art store. They will last you a long time. And I do liner with these two as well. So filling the brow. We want to first look at when we are thinking about honey. <laughs> when we are thinking about filling the brow, you want to look for a couple of things. I want to first look at the hair color, the root color, or the root, root color, and the brow color, and also the skin tone. So he has golden highlights. So for me, Somewhere along the line, I need to either infuse this medium brown, which is kind of golden like his hair. Can we see the resemblance? Mm -hmm. Or either I'm going to need to infuse this pale blonde mm -hmm. if I set it with the powder, because it's going to pull. Can we see the golden tones? Mm -hmm. So I want to pull that in there at some point. This is for more of a natural brow, not necessarily like a if it's like a beet brow and you're just trying to slay it, go in with your medium or a dark brown and conceal it and keep it moving. But this is for when you were trying to fill in the brow and you want it to look like an actual brow. Okay? I also love these Sephora Collection pencils because the tips are very fine. The smaller the um, pencil, the more hair-like it's going to look. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take that first I'm gonna start with the, where is she? Chocolate brown. I'm gonna start with chocolate brown. Actually, I'm gonna start with my pomade. And the reason why I'm gonna start with my pomade is because I start from the end of the brow and I work my way to the beginning of the brow. The reason why I start from the end is because the end should be the darkest part of the brow. It should be the most precise part. And when you start working, your hand has tension. So your hand has to adjust to the placement that you have it for that tension to find a new release. So I would rather start at the end where it should be a little bit more harsh and uh, deep with that tension. So by the time I get to the beginning of the brow, my tension has released and I have more control over what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take a palette 
and I am going to, where is my spatula? I'm gonna scrape a little bit of pomade out and I only use one pomade. This color is dark brown. I used to have that, but it used to get hard and I used to have to like pop it in my hood. So what you do is I have this beautiful product called Duraline. Drop it in there, mix it. And it goes right back to its formula because mine is dried out. But you see how it's creamy again? Oh, okay. Why does it, why does it do that? Because air gets into it, even though it's twisted. I would say um, put a piece of uh, saran wrap over it and okay. then close it just to have the extra protection or seal it. Or if you stir it, if you just stir it, it'll like the formulation will mix back together. Because uh -huh. oxidation and separation, that's what hardens it. Gotcha. That's why I didn't like that. I didn't want to do that. Like, every time like so I'm taking my tiny, 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 tiny brush and I'm taking a little bit of this pomade and I'm starting right at the arch I'm taking my thumb I like to use the back of my forefinger rest it take the thumb considering that this is because um, sometimes you're doing hair sometimes people are doing hair you can't be here sometimes um, You've done the complexion already, you don't want to mess it up. The fingerprint is what mess, messes it up, the texture. So if you lay it this way, most of the time, you won't mess up the makeup. So I'm gonna rest and lift, okay? I'm going in with hair-like strokes from the arch to the end. It's going to be really quick and simple when you stop from the end. Watch how fast the brow just kind of falls together. So my next thing is I'm switching from my pomade to my chocolate brown. So I'm going to first comb this through. Make sure it's equally dispersed and even and blend it out. So now I'm going to take my pencil. I'm starting from the bottom line. I'm holding the back of my pencil. Raise the brow as much as possible. And little hair like strokes. The direction that the hair is growing is the direction that I am drawing those strokes in. So for example, these hairs are growing down. So I'm gonna pull it down. These hairs are growing over, so I'm pulling it over. These hairs here are growing up, so I'm going up. Comb it through. Now I'm going to switch to my ebony. I'm holding the back of the brush. And the reason why I'm holding the back of this brush is because I'm losing control the further away from the front that I am. The closer I am, the more control I have, the more harsh that color is going to come out. The further away, the less control I have, so the softer the application becomes. Stretch. Now I'm going to take a little bit of brow freeze. Lift, comb through. So this is what marries everything together. And 
then you get a nice filled brow. Let's conceal. Raising. I like to use a flat brush just because it allows me to really get close and reshape. I'm going to clean my same brush off and use that to blend. of your finger will really help to marry and blend this in. He really didn't need the concealer, but I just want to give you guys a full brow shaping. Then what I take is whatever's left, stretch here, just to blend this out just a little bit. Any questions?